Well, since since we've got a pretty nice day today, I thought I'd come out here and show you how to install a sink. Now this is not the sink that's that would automatically go into this area, but this is just a show and tell sink. And so the first thing you want to do when you get ready to cut in for your sink, and I'm assuming because a lot of these kitchen sinks are so big now that in order to clear the front of the kitchen cabinet so you don't be cutting into that is you've got to go as far as you can to the back and so what I've done I've pushed this all the way except for maybe about a half inch or so from the back and then of course the rest of it is just standard sitting out on the countertop but what you want to do now is you want to mark around the sink itself and just make sure this is where it's going alright and then don't do like I sometimes do I'll get in a hurry and not mark this line in a half an inch and then the next thing I know I cut it out put the sink in there and it falls through so now we're going to come out our half an inch Half inch, half inch. I say half inch, I usually come out five eighths because when you're running a saw, you sometimes, it's sometimes, I usually measure in about five eighths because every once in a while when you're running your saw, it'll sometimes creep over the wrong way. And so you've got that little sixteenth of an eighth of an inch to play with. Now the first thing we want to do, I mean the simplest thing, is just get a hole saw and cut these four corners. That way you don't have to worry. That way you don't have to worry about your trying to run that saber saw or whatever you're trying to do around that corner. Okay, I've got me a two inch hole saw on it. Okay, I've got my got my four holes cut. Now let's I'm gonna use a skill saw and cut up what I need to. Of course we can't get to the very back. That's that's we'll do all the sides and the front. Okay, one thing you want to do when you cut this, you want to leave a little bit of a little bit of meat at each corner until you get that back part cut so we're going to go ahead and do these three and then we're going to do the back and then we'll come back and trim out the others Well, that was the easy part. We've got these three cut. We left a little bit of meat on each corner. Now, as you can tell, we're so close to the back that we cannot get our any kind of a sawzall or anything in there. I mean, we might, I mean, a saber saw or sawzall or something with a uh, sawzall, there's a chance of the thing accidentally slipping out of the slot and jumping over and hitting the countertop somewhere so we're not even going to take a chance to do that we're going to figure this is a ten thousand dollar top so what I'm going to do that's where these 
these little routers here come in handy from the from this particular bit we're a half inch to the cutting edge and so we know we're back about three quarters of an inch from the back so we're going to set up a block or something to make up the difference so that we can hit this line right here and go all the way across and we're going to go from hole to hole and then we're going to come in and then cut our other ones so if, if you don't have one of these type of routers you really need to get one you need to get one of these especially if you're thinking about doing this type of, of work I don't get it just just for one job you can make do with you know if this is for your own house you're allowed to make a few mistakes because you know we're not getting paid for it okay now what we're gonna have to do when you've got these these little laminate trimmers these things don't have any kind of adjustment and we don't want to take that much meat off one time so we're gonna have to raise this thing up we're gonna have to raise this thing up so we can take like you know quarter to half inch at a time going across if we try to take it all at once we're liable to break the belt or smoke the router so but the first thing we need to do we need to get our our measurement from the from the edge okay you can see the router the router bit at that point at that point where the line is line is right there let me make that thing a little heavier for you so we've got to come right there so we need to come back away from that looks like oh, we're gonna call it 7 16 so we'll just do a half an inch we're gonna do a half an inch from the backsplash okay we got our piece on the backsplash now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape this on the bottom of the router. You can see it's only going to cut just a little bit. And so we'll do about a half an inch. And being this three-quarter top, then the rest of it will be a quarter of an inch. And then it should cut pretty easy. So it's just a matter of taping this on there. And then we're ready for our first cut. All right, we got this thing taped on there. Since we're just doing such a short run anyway, it's not going to matter. There is no what's the best kind of tape to use, just any kind of a masking tape or something that's got a slick finish to it. Boy, talk about a dull bit. Okay, now we've taken our spacer off of there. Now let's go ahead and finish her up. We got her cut. Now what we'll need is we're going to need somebody to hold underneath because we don't want to cut this thing and then have it fall through and break part of the counter. I mean it probably won't happen but we just don't want to take that chance.
like that. How about that? Fits like a glove. See, there's our pencil mark right there where we're supposed to be. You can probably barely see that one. And you can see how close we are back here. 